Okay, so um, I just wanted to go over a quick overview of how to make a um, firmware with QMK and then flash it to your AMJ40. So um, I'll try to you know help out as much as possible, but there are some things that you kind of have to do on your own, such as well, it's the only thing really, is uh, read up on how the QMK firmware works. Now you can read it at docs.qmk.fm as you can see up here um, and it'll teach you how uh, layers work, what the key codes are, macros, and how it all comes together to turn into the firmware of the keyboard. Um, okay, so to start off with this, um, first of all I made all the layouts, except for layout 4 so far, but I'll get it done uh, right after this video. So all the layouts are on um, on the website on flashcork.com, and I also linked it in the, uh, the Discord. Now, uh, you can see that there's six total layouts. Whichever layout you choose is the configuration you want to use as well. Okay, so let's say for example that you choose layout 1, which I assume is probably going to be the most popular. So you have the amj40l1.json. Now that's the configuration file for kbfirmware.com. Um, it used to be called like qmk.io, but it recently changed the uh, domain name. Okay, so when you go to kbfirmware.com, first you want to click upload and then um, a file selection window will open up and then just go to wherever you unzipped the .json file now we're doing layout 1 so it's amj 40 l1 open and then it'll automatically open that file for you okay so don't mess with the wiring because um, I already wired it out the same way that layout 1 should be wired pins, don't mess with it, everything's fine there, um, and then, yeah, don't mess with any of the pins. Key map is probably the one that, the only one you're really going to be touching. Um, and then there's macros, where you can record macros and then uh, tie it to a key. Quantum, don't touch it, just as it says, unless you know what you're doing. Settings, you can uh, probably change the backlight levels if you'd like, if you'd like different increments of um, how bright or dim the backlighting can get. And then compile, I'll explain at the end. Okay, so for key map, now how do you use this? Um, it's pretty straightforward actually, but right now we're looking at layer zero, which is the first or default layer that if you don't press anything and just use your keyboard, that's the layer that it uses. Um, and so, on this layer, you can edit each key by clicking on the key. And let's say that, for whatever reason, I want to make this key a G. So I click it, and then press G on the keyboard, on my keyboard. Or, there are certain things that you'll find you cannot um, type in directly with a keyboard. So let's say I want to do an exclamation mark. I won't be able to, because it'll just turn it into left shift before I can even press the one to give the alternate uh, key, the exclamation mark. So if you want to do exclam exclamation mark, click the key that you want to put it, map it to, click here, and then uh, for example exclamation mark would be a secondary, it's right there. And then we see it's now an exclamation mark. Okay, so that's pretty easy, and so for the main letters you could just use your keyboard to type them in. Alright, okay. Now, this is all pretty easy. Now, what you do, what you actually have in QMK is called layers, and layers are accessed with um, certain key codes. Now, first of all, let's see what layers are. We have layer zero here, layer one, and so that's as you go to layer one, it basically remaps all the keys to become well whatever layer one has. So here, whenever you're on layer 1, then what once was Q, for example, now becomes 1, and everything else, so on and so forth. So, it's pretty easy to understand these layers, right? You can have 
bunches of different layers with all the different keys because obviously we aren't using a 104 key keyboard anymore. This is a, what is it, like a 42 or 46, depending on if you're using staggered or ortho. Um, so it's pretty easy to understand the layers itself. Now, how do we access these layers? There are different ways to access, and you will need to read further under docs.qmk.fm under layer switching, and it'll teach you about the different ways to access the layers. Um, now, really quickly, some of the most commonly used ones, momentary switch to layer, so basically that's MO, and what momentary means is that if you hold down a key, as long as you're holding down that key, everything else gets remapped to whatever that uh, momentary key is supposed to, wh whichever layer it was supposed to go to. So let's see here. I guess um, I don't have any. Yeah. Nope. What am I doing here? I don't have any momentary here, but let's see what. Um, okay, well, let's make this a momentary right here. Now, how do we turn it into a momentary? We click on that key configure the selected key under function and then MO okay now it's asking us layer so then let's just say for example layer 1 and now it says MO1 so what happens is this is layer 0 so on layer 0 if we press this key right here what it'll do is it'll actually while you're holding that key remap everything to layer 1 so that's a way to momentarily access layer 1 as long as you're holding down on that key. Now if you notice, I made um, this LT 1 space, LT 2 space. Now what LT does is um, it's a momentary switch to layer when held and KC when tapped. So it's a normal key code when tapped. So basically, it can have two different functions depending on whether you're holding the key or tapping the key. So LT space, LT1 space means that if you tap on this key, it just acts normally like a spacebar. But if you press and hold down on this left spacebar, it maps to layer 1. And here, if you tap it, it's normally a spacebar. But if you press and hold it, it maps to layer 2. And um, and then, yeah, so that's a way to, to access all the keys under layer 1 by pressing and holding this and then pressing whatever other keys are there. Alright, so let's see, what else do I need to go over? Um, let's see. So the different types of keys. So these are pretty, pretty self-explanatory. It's all the different things you can access. Secondary. Um, there's power and sleep where you can actually turn off your computer and you can put it into hibernation mode just through, um, through your keyboard. And one thing that's useful to have, although it's not absolutely necessary for the AMJ40, is to have a soft reset key somewhere mapped to one of the layers. And what this does is it basically puts it into bootloader mode, so it's ready to accept another .hex file. So if, you're, uh, if you want to reflash your keyboard, you just press reset, and it's ready to load in the firmware. Otherwise, if you didn't have a soft reset button, normally you would have to flip over your AMJ40, and on the back side there's a little hole where you can uh, put a pin into, a stick a pin into, and then press the physical reset button. Um, all right, let's see here. Sorry if I'm like not very clear mumbling stuff over. I didn't get very much sleep because I was trying to get um, all the AMJ40s packed and shipped out as soon as possible for the past two days so I haven't gotten very much sleep in the past two days um, so and then there's keypad not much there lighting okay so we have BL tog BL DEC INC so uh, decrement increment and step I to be honest I cannot remember what step does but 
BL toggle, basically if you have it mapped to one of the keys, it toggles the backlights on and off. Um, BLDEC, that decreases the lighting um, at an increment based on how many backlight levels you have. So if you have four, then you can decrease uh, three times, right? And then you can increase back up three times because there's four total levels. Uh, now, let's see here. Well, any other things? Function. Okay, so these are the uh, layer access codes that you can use. So momentary, um, this is the, uh, what is it called? the momentary switch to layer when held and Casey when tapped. There's the other kinds of uh, layer accessing that you can read up on your own, but if you really need help, feel free to ask me on Discord. And um, not too much else, but you can also map keys so that they have left control and, for example, if we do left control and C, well, what this effectively does is it automatically, without using a macro, um, is it makes this a copy key. If you press this, it just copies whatever is highlighted, right? And so let's do a, actually let's make this a left control C and a left control V. And now we've made a uh, really quick way, this is this button, copies this button pastes might be useful who knows uh, if you copy and paste a lot of things from one place to another um, and then let's see anything else macros to be honest I have never used the uh, macro recording function in the GUI I usually use uh, I use I actually just physically or I use the uh, the key map files and I edit it through the key map files and then through command line build the firmware but I've never done it in the GUI but I guess you can record a macro so if you start recording and you just type stuff in yeah it looks like it records all the key presses now let's see if it can do the timing so I'm holding this key for that long and looks like press type press type press type looks like it might be able to handle it like holding a key for a duration of five seconds. Okay, and then we're done. All right, now we have that macro. I guess that was called macro zero. Now, if you go to key map, and then let's make that a macro instead, a macro. Da, 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 da. How do we get to that? macro and so you click that M there and then you can have it mapped to macro zero so if you press this button now it'll do whatever I just recorded in macro zero and that's about it I can't really think of anything else um, as I said you will have to do some reading up on how QM QMK works um, there's a lot of cool tricks that you can do once you understand the uh, how the firmware works a little better and especially understand the way to access layers um, and then for flashing it's pretty straightforward but basically what you do is after you oops after you're done making your key map right so your key maps completely done all the layers are set what I would suggest first before you do anything else go to settings save your configuration why because all those things that you just did to your key map you lose them even if you make a hex file you won't be able to edit you won't be able to go back and load the uh, the key map that you just made if you didn't save it so first go to settings save configuration it'll download a file with whatever it's called so mine is still called layout name amj 40 l1 and it'll download that download that json file and that way later on you can open up kvfirmware.com again and reload that configuration that you just made in and it'll save your key map okay so once you have that configuration saved then go to compile 
and hit download.hex. And you got to wait a little bit as it compiles it. And there we have the hex file. OK, so once we have a hex file downloaded, what we want to do is you want to open up the uh, AMJ flashing tool that you can download also in the same link where I put all the layouts. And then um, unzip that flashing tool and then get to the thing under window, get to the Windows folder under there. And then, so you have reflash.bat. Well, what you got to do first is do the setup. Um, through the instructions that I wrote up on uh, flashcork.com, set up, get everything done, and then here you have the hex. So uh, first, what you got to do is plug in your keyboard uh, by USB into your computer, and then take this hex file, click, and drag it into reflash.bat, and then it might give you um, the security warning. Click run, and then say yes and then it'll wait for bootloader it'll say waiting for bootloader and I don't even have my PCB plugged in so give me one second so it'll say waiting for bootloader and then here if you've previously flashed your uh, keyboard with a key map that has a soft reset button now's your chance to press that soft reset button or if this is the first time to uh, flash your PCB what you got to do is plug in, okay, I have mine plugged in now, the PCB, and then you want to press the reset button, and it gives you a reminder if you don't press your reset button fast enough, saying, did you forget to press your reset button? So here I'm going to press it, and it'll erase the uh, flash memory, and then write the new hex file slash keymap onto your keyboard, and then you're set.